Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of computer architecture and organization. Today's topic is direct memory access. In this video, I'll be telling you what is the concept of DMA, what do you mean by a DMA and the modes of data transfer. There are three modes of data transfer, burst mode, cycle stealing mode and interleaving mode. So let us begin. First, just to tell you about DMA. DMA stands for direct memory access. You must remember this term as well. DMA is direct memory access. From the name itself, it is clear that it is actually a process which enables data transfer in between the IO devices and memory without any involvement of the CPU. There is no involvement of CPU, no intervention of CPU when there is a direct data transfer in between the IO and the memory. That is why it is known as direct memory access. There are many advantages, disadvantages you must remember. The advantages, it does not allow CPU and directly uh, data transfer can be held in between the I.O. devices and the memory that there is a fast processing also, right? But since there is a direct transfer, it means there is a requirement of a controller, which is a DMA controller. So it requires DMA controller to carry out this particular operation. So it increases the overall cost. And in the case of DMA, sometimes cache coherence problems may also be observed. So that is also the limitations or you can say the disadvantage. Now let me tell you how DMA works means if you are saying without the intervention of the CPU what do you mean by this. If you see this particular diagram here you can see there is a CPU, there is a main memory, there is a system bus right. So what happens system bus is what? System bus is the integration or the collection of the address bus, data bus and the control bus. This is what the system bus is. So address data and control buses, it holds always retained with the CPU and address bus is used to carry the address data bus is used to carry the data and accordingly data transfer happens. But here you can see DMA controller, it actually provides an interface in between the system bus, in between the bus and the input output device. You can see DMA oh. controller is in between. So it is the interface and with a DMA controller, many more external devices can be connected. As you can see from first DMA controller, one IO device is being connected from second DMA controller to IO devices. Similarly, many more external IO devices can be connected via the DMA controller and DMA direct memory access means without the intervention of the CPU. So what happens over here, the system bus which retains with the CPU, when CPU gives the control of system buses to DMA controller, then direct transfer of data can happen in between the IO devices and the main memory. So when system buses command is with the D, uh, this with controller, that is what the direct memory access. Here you can see the another diagram, little bit the elaborated diagram. Here some of the signals have also been shown. So you will be getting to understand how it actually works. As you can see, this is the processor system bus. You can see suppose this is address bus, this is data bus and this is control bus. Here it is the memory. DMA controller which is the interface and the IO devices. So what happened for direct memory access? What happened for this particular operation? First DMA controller sends a bus request signal. BR is a bus request signal and this bus request signal is being given to the processor. Here you can see bus request this is active high means this active high signal means active high logic. It is provided and bus request is being given to the processor. When processor receives high logic means one on this hold pin, right? 
one on this particular hold pin. So what happens as soon as this processor is receiving high logic on this hold pin, whatever the operation, whatever the execution of current machine cycle the processor is doing, it will immediately complete it. And then it sends hold acknowledgement signal. This is what HLDA hold acknowledgement signal and this hold acknowledgement signal is being given to the DMA controller. You can say this is the arrow and this hold acknowledgement signal is given to the DMA controller which is what BG. BG this is the bus grant signal means buses is being granted. So what does it mean? The system buses which were was supposed which were uh, CPU was having the system bus now when it is giving the bus grant it means now this particular processor is releasing the control of system buses and now these system buses is to be provided to the DMA controller. So when DMA controller takes control of the system buses now it can directly transfer the data in between the memory and the I.O. devices. This is how the system bus control is being given from the processor to the DMA controller. And when the system bus is with the DMA controller, processor can execute any operation. Processor is free to perform any operation, but those operations only which does not require the system buses. And what is happening when DMA controller is done for completing the task when DMA controller is done with the task whatever it has to done now DMA controller will do what it will release the bus request releasing the bus request means now it is sending zero to this means low logic and as soon as processor is receiving low on the sector hold pin the processor will get to know now the work of DMA controller is done and it is no longer requiring the system buses. So immediately processor will get the low logic will send the low logic on this hold acknowledgement pin means bus grant signal is being removed and it means what the system buses are again with the processor. This is how the entire operation is being performed, which is actually the requirement. So when you are understanding this particular operation means when you are saying processor initiates the DMA controller by sending starting address and number of words means when the processor initiates DMA controller, when this DMA controller is initiated. So two things is being required. What are those two things? One is the starting address and second is the data count means this is being set suppose the starting address is let us say 1000 and data count is 500 so these two are the required thing which is to be set for the DMA controller now what will happen after each and every execution when first task is being performed starting address address will increment by one next address will be 1001 but data count means if one transfer happens now the data count is 499 now next location address next location data will be pointed out means it will be 1002 next data will be transferred 498 means data count will be subtracted by one while starting address that will be added by one that is what means initial the memory location which is to be pointed that particular data is being transferred then next memory location will be transferred then next memory location will be transferred suppose there are 500 data when first data is being transferred number of data count will be 499 when one more data is being transferred remaining number of data count will be 498 and this process repeated till data count reaches to zero it means whole of the data is being transferred now DMA controller will send low logic at bus request means now they, it does not require the system buses so processor will release the bus grant signal and accordingly the entire operation will be performed. This is what the basics of the DMA. Now there are three types of modes of data transfer for DMA. So what is happening means uh, you have understood till now that system buses will be required 
for the DMA controller when there is a data transfer in between the I.O. devices and the memory and in that duration CPU can perform only those operations which does not require the system buses. It means you must be able to compute what is the required time duration for which the CPU is in the blocked state means CPU has given the control to the DMA controller. So there are three different modes of operations burst mode, cycle stealing mode and interleaving mode. Let us discuss one by one. First is the burst mode. What is this burst mode? In this mode, burst of data means entire data or the block of data, that block of data is transferred when DMA controller is having the system buses, means when CPU has releases the control of the buses and DMA is having, then block of data is being transferred. Since a complete block of data is being transferred means this is a relatively fastest mode because one block of data is being transferred at a time. Since one block or you can say huge amount of data, it means time will be saved. But here also you must be able to compute for how much duration CPU is blocked. CPU is blocked means the buses are not with the CPU. System bus is not with the CPU. System bus is with the DMA controller. For that particular calculation, two time factors is being required. One is the time required to prepare the data and another is the time required to transfer the data. If Tx is the time required to prepare the data and Ty is the time required to transfer the data, then the total time required will be what? Sum of these two Tx and Ty. So percentage of time CPU remains in block state, that would be what? Ty upon Tx plus Ty into 100. So this is how you can compute for burst mode for how much of the duration CPU will be in the blocked state. Second mode is the cycle stealing mode. So cycle stealing mode means there may be some I.O. devices which are relatively slow in the operations and those I.O. devices are taking a certain time or you can say longer time for data preparation. So when data will be prepared, then only data will be transferred. So till the time that there is a requirement to prepare the data, the buses is being released from DMA controller means buses are with the CPU. And once the data is prepared, the control of buses is being given to the DMA controller. Right? That particular mode is the cycle stealing mode. Means once the data is re uh, ready, then one cycle for one particular cycle control of system buses is given to the DMA controller. So that prepared amount of data can be transferred. Right? And when data is getting ready, till that particular time control of buses is with the CPU only. Since here it requires longer time to for data to get ready. It means this particular mode is relatively slow, right? And it requires time, means this is time consuming. So in this particular case, if you need to compute the percentage of time CPU remains in the block state is what? TY means time taking to transfer the data upon time taken to prepare the data into 100 percent means you'll be getting the percentage of time but otherwise you are getting ty upon tx means control of buses is only for when the data is to be transferred upon total time which is required to prepare the data third mode is interleaving mode interleaving mode is when when CPU is not performing any operation means CPU system buses are free then only the control will be given to the DMA controller right so when CPU does not require the buses then only control is being given to the DMA controller it means that is the interleaving mode such as such type of mode is the slowest mode because there may be certain situations only when the CPU is free means CPU will not be blocked at all because the when uh, the buses are free then only they are going to utilize means CPU will be completely free to perform its dedicated task and other than that required free time of the system buses would be utilized that is why it is the slowest mode means it is in this particular mode, less amount of data will be transferred depending upon the availability of the system buses only. 
So this is all about the burst mode, cycle stealing mode and the interleaving mode. You must be also able to differentiate in between the program control and DMA transfer. What is the difference between these two? See, program control, IO program control I have discussed in the previous video. Now I am talking about the DMA transfer. So IO program, this is the software control data transfer while DMA control is the hardware control data transfer. DMA control require DMA controller, right? While no extra hardware is required in the case of the program controller, DMA controller is fast because CPU is not involved in this particular case, no intervention of the CPU. But IU program here, data transfer is relatively slow and CPU is involved, means the processor is being involved, right? And along with that, with, with the DMA, large amount of data can be transferred while small amount of data can be transferred with the IO program control mode. So this is how you can differentiate. There are certain factors only I have listed out over here. You may include many more. So accordingly, you can differentiate in between the program control transfer and DMA transfer. In the next video, I'll be talking about the DMA controller. Thank you so much for watching this video.